Full disclosure, this video is an extract from our longer video about the proceedings in the House of Commons yesterday. To check out the full video, click the link in the description. On Tuesday, May invited Jeremy Corbyn to negotiate a Labour-Conservative Brexit deal. This has annoyed some of the Eurosceptic wing of her party, because a Labour-influenced deal will probably just be a softer Brexit. In fact, a couple of ministers have even resigned over this, with speculation of more to come. While it's obviously annoyed Brexiteers, it's worth looking at what May is actually offering here. She's made it clear that any concessions will only be put in the political declaration, and as such won't be legally binding. It will still have the support of both the Conservative and Labour parties, but there's a chance that the next leader of the Conservative party might be tempted to ignore it and go ahead with their vision of Brexit. Mr David Jones! Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does it remain the position of the Prime Minister that the Leader of the Opposition is not fit to govern? <laughs> Prime Minister! Yes, I, think, I, I hope my right honourable friend will have heard from the uh, remarks I made about what I think a Labour government would do in relation to the economy, that uh, I do not think that the Labour Party should be in government. It is the Conservatives that are delivering for people. And, uh, and the right honourable gentleman, the right honourable gentleman, the leader of the opposition and, and I, have different, have different opinions on a number of issues. Ah! Lee Rowley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Last week in this chamber, the Prime Minister said the biggest threat to our standing in the world, to our defence and to our economy, is the leader of the opposition. In her judgment, what now qualifies him for involvement in Brexit? <laughs> Prime Minister! Can I say to my honourable friend, every member of this House is involved in Brexit. I want to deliver Brexit. I want to deliver Brexit in an orderly way. I want to do it as soon as possible. I want to do it without us having to fight European parliamentary elections. But the House has rejected every proposal that has gone before it so far. So I believe what the public want is for us to work across this House to find a solution. Interestingly, during Prime Minister's questions, Conservatives repeatedly criticised their own leader for talking with Jeremy Corbyn. Dr Julian Lewis! Why is a Conservative Prime Minister who repeatedly told us that no deal is better than a bad deal, now approaching Labour MPs to block a WTO Brexit when most Conservative MPs want us to leave the European Union with a clean break in nine days' time? Can I say to my honourable friend, I've always, I was absolutely right, no deal is better than a bad deal, but we've got a good deal. Yeah. And, and I want, we had a chance last Friday to ensure that we would leave the European Union on the 22nd of May, and I'm grateful to all those colleagues who supported that, uh, that motion. Some of them, I know, did it with a very heavy heart. But I want to ensure that we deliver Brexit. I want to ensure that we do it in an orderly way, as soon as possible, without fighting European elections. But to do that, we need to find a way of this House agreeing the withdrawal agreement and agreeing, uh, the, uh, and agreeing the way forward. And that is on that basis that I have been sitting down with members across the House and will continue to do so in order to ensure that we can find a way forward that this House can support. Martin Whitfield while the official opposition merely thanked her. Mr Speaker, I welcome the Prime Minister's offer for talks following the meetings that I've held with members across this House and look forward to meeting her later today and I welcome her willingness to compromise to resolve the Brexit deadlock. Yeah. This really highlights the continued infighting within the Conservative Party. That being said, the Labour Party were also worried that this might be some sort of political trap. By associating Corbyn with this deal, if it fails, May can put some of the blame on him. Also, if they can't agree on anything, then May can say that it's Corbyn's fault that no Brexit deal was agreed. SNP MP Stuart Hosey remarked on this during PMQs today. 